Yes, hello. This is another Pursuing God's Heart, uh, Book of Ephesians, chapter 3. And I want you to notice something here. In verse 1, uh, Paul says, For this reason I, Paul, comma, and then go down to verse 14. For this reason I, and then he carries on. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father. And he goes on to pray a prayer uh, for, for the recipients of the letter. Now, interesting thing. Why do I point out that? I, I think... In verse uh, chapter three, verse one, I think Paul says something that kind of distracts him from his prayer. And so he, he doesn't get to his prayer until verse 14. So this is uh, Ephesians 3, 1 to 13 is a digression. All right. So uh, what's the digression? Well, we're not going to go into detail. It's some of the richest uh, theology and, and it's wonderful stuff. I'm not going to get into all that. I just want us to notice the digression. And then notice the heart of Paul coming through, which really does reflect the heart of God beautifully. He says, for this reason, I, Paul, and then he adds a comment about himself. He says, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles. So he's in prison and he mentions his prison status in reference to them. If you go back to Acts, you'll see that the person that... Uh, Paul is sort of imprisoned for, if you like, is a man who was from this region. And so maybe these people were blaming themselves for the fact that Paul's in prison. And so that triggers in his mind an explanation of God's grace at work in his life and how his imprisonment is all a part of that and, and kind of the role that he has. And he goes through this in fascinating 13 verses. And when he gets to the end of it, he says, verse 13, almost like a a close brackets to sort of finish the thought. I okay, can't a prisoner. You have, you have for your sake. And he goes through all of this wonderful stuff. And then in verse 13, he says, so I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. That's a fascinating statement. Uh, Paul, I think, distracted almost from the flow of his own thought by this uh, reference to himself in prison. But then he, when he starts explaining it, he ends up saying to them, look, all that I'm suffering is your glory. In effect, it's saying this is kind of a, a, a vivid image of what you're worth to me. This is how much value you have. It's kind of a declaration uh, of their value. And, and so they shouldn't look at him and, and sort of pity him and beat themselves up. They should recognize that Paul's suffering because because of the love of God, the glorious grace of God that is for them. And so actually, Paul's suffering on their behalf is their glory. And that's a little bit like, isn't it, the, the greater picture of Jesus suffering on the cross. We look at Jesus and we go, oh, he's doing that for me. What, what a terrible thing. But actually, no, it's a beautiful thing. Jesus dying on the cross is not just Jesus being glorified, like it says in John's gospel, but with the logic of this, Jesus's suffering is my glory. That's why we boast in the cross, because it, it was for me that he did that. And for the Ephesians receiving this, maybe it would lift their spirits and they'd say, you know what, Paul is in prison and we have been beating ourselves up, but, but actually, no, it's part of God's plan to reveal God's heart for us that we uh, are considered worthy of being suffered for even though we're not worthy and isn't that a beautiful picture of the gospel so he starts in verse one with a prayer gets distracted by his own prison situation goes on to explain kind of the backstory of his ministry and concludes that section by saying this is your glory don't lose heart then he gets back to his prayer and that too is well worth looking at